we are at Walnut Creek. It's a nice little man-made reservoir out here in Papillion, Nebraska. And I'm just gonna see if there's anything biting today. We just had a pretty big storm come through last night. And for the most part, it probably turned everything off, but we'll see what happens. And you can see today, I'm using a jig, weedless, nice blue and black skirt. And we also have the beaver trailer on it, which actually I could rip this open to get a little bit more action. And there will be a lot of this. You will be cleaning off a lot. A lot of weeds. But well, what you're basically trying to do is get into these areas like that. And you see there was a jump over there. I don't know if you can see it or not. But these bass are down in this. This lake gets down to about 30 feet in a couple spots, but for the most part, it's five to 10 feet deep. The part that I'm in now is probably three to five feet deep. It's just so thick with moss. The second it hits the bottom, it's covered. There's no time for the fish to even see it. I think I'm gonna switch over to, to my worms. But I wanna show you something kinda cool here. This is something I picked up from the informative fisherman. But if you look on here, you see I have this snap swivel. So even though it's not ideal to have this all the time, when you are bank fishing and you're constantly switching stuff out and you don't have, you know, eight or 10 different rods like you might on a boat, it's good to have that little snap swivel there so you can pretty quickly switch stuff out. So now I'm gonna take this wacky rig, slip it right onto that swivel, that quick connect snap, and we are good to go. So now I can throw my worm off the same pole, same line. I'm going 30 pound braid to a fluorocarbon leader. If you work it correctly, you can almost make it like a frog on the surface for a top water. And right now there are several kayak fishermen out here. They might be doing a tournament. Something I was thinking about getting into eventually. But for a good kayak, you're looking at a thousand plus dollars. Especially if you want some kind of pedal drive or the Mirage drive on the Hobie. Let it hit and sink. Let it hit the bottom. A lot of times you don't even have to work this bait. You just throw it out there and it does the work for you. And after 10 or 15 seconds, if you don't get any action, then you can twitch it a few times. You can drag it and you can also hop it up and then let it sink back down again. And like that, oh, I lost one. Well, almost had him. But like that, they'll hit it on the fall. Yeah, some days you spend a majority of the day doing this, cleaning all the crap off of this, just so you can try and catch a bass. But that's what we do as fishermen. Come out here, hope for a good day. And if you get at least one and don't get skunked, then all of a sudden the trip was worth it. And here I'm doing a little bit different technique. I'm doing double taps to make it kind of crawl along the bottom, a little bit more aggressive. Oh, and I had a couple very aggressive hits. Oh, I missed them. Well, hopefully we don't get skunked today, but it is a beautiful day out. There we go. Right in front of the edge of that log. See if we can get something on there. Give it a couple of small jerks. So I think it's alive. See if that's enough. 
No. Nothing there. Which is surprising. Which is why I'm starting to think maybe they're a little bit deeper out or on the other side of the lake, but you never know. This is pretty shallow right here. We're just in a couple feet of water, but I have heard some stories of people catching some pretty sizable bass in just two or three feet of water. So yeah, I mean, you can just see how shallow this water is. If, I don't know if you look out there, if you can see, but you can see the ripples where the ripples are much smaller and that's where it's shallow because it's hitting the bottom sooner and the ripples are happening faster, so it's smaller ripples. Poison ivy back here. That would make for a not so fun day. So even though it's a little bit windy and I haven't hit anything yet, I've had plenty of bites and a couple of missed hook sets, but it is beautiful outside. A lot of butterflies. Still a lot of greenery. Haven't seen any deer, but typically this is a high traffic area, so they wouldn't be on these trails. Well, we are rigged back up. I have a zoom trip worm. It's about a five inch and still wacky rigging it. So now we are headed to the other side of the lake. And for the most part, this side is deeper. The other side was between one and five feet. This side is closer to 10 to 30 feet. There's a little side pond that I'm gonna hit as well. I'm guessing I'm gonna have at least one catch on this side, if not more. So here's the pond. We can start hitting some of these areas. And I do have much heavier gear to get out further if I need to. And I also have, I have several jigs as well. So we'll see if we can get anything to hit on this side in the deeper water. But it would seem to me the bass are sleeping or they're out deep based on that storm. They're probably active during the storm and then like a lot of fish as the barometric pressure goes back up as the storm leaves to go back into kind of a dormant mode. Now this is not casting out. Oh, there we go. We got our first one of the day, if we can keep them on. Yep, there we go. Nice hook set inside of the mouth. But there we got little guy. So we're on the board. But like I was saying before, these zoom trick worms work pretty well. They have a much slower presentation, so they're a lot less intimidating to these fish. Being that it is much deeper out here, it seems like there's a lot more activity in general. Seeing more crappie and bluegill, minnows, green algae instead of brown algae that's dead, and a little bit healthier plant life. So. Anytime you're on a body of water, you do want to kind of shoot for the more green, healthier areas. Unless, of course, it's winter time, then you're going to shoot for the areas with the, the deeper water and the structure. And you'd be surprised how many bass are sit right out here in the rocks. No major cover, nothing to really shelter them. But they're out here just hanging out, going for those little minnows and stuff that are down in the rocks. I just saw a big bass jump. So if you see that tree right there with all that timber around it, that's where I'm heading. So I think I'm gonna go one of these guys, ribbon tail. And 
We're still gonna do wanky style to start, but I may end up switching over to a jig here in a minute, because I need a distance to get out there. But let's see if I can cast this one out far enough to get it done. And on this one, same thing. Point about the halfway point. And on this one, I'm gonna skin hook it just a little. And then go right around that tube. Just like that, Not of action. There's one. Let's see if we can lift them out of there. There we go. A little bit better one. Again on that wacky rig, using the old monster. This guy's got a lot of fight in him, but <sighs> let him go. So the technique I'm using now is a drag and a twitch. So I cast it out, drag it, twitch it at the top, let it sit for a second. Drag it, give it a twitch, let it sit. These guys will sit and stare at these baits for several seconds before they take them. And a lot of times if you do this slow, methodical drag, they'll follow it right up to the bank. A lot of times they'll grab it right at the bank or if you're on a boat, you'll see them actually trailing it to the boat. Obviously everyone wants to catch that big one, but once you get down the techniques for catching bass in general, the big ones will come eventually. As long as you get out there, spend some time on the water. And see this water here is just as shallow as the water that I was originally fishing when I first got here, which is why I was fishing it, because you never know what you're gonna get. You don't know if the bass is down in a hole. You don't know if they're down in some weeds. You never know with these guys. They're super stealthy hunters. And a lot of times they will be sitting literally right in front of you. So you wanna hit these pots too. So for example, I'll just cast out a foot or two right in front of me. And you'd be surprised how many times a bass will just pick it right up, right in front of your feet. That's the next spot right in front of you. Let it sit. Let them grab it if they want it. If they're there and they see it, they're gonna grab it. So a lot of times this technique is what I use with the wacky rig. It just, I call it the set it and forget it. Just cast it out to a spot, just let it sit there. If there's a bass anywhere nearby, they're gonna swim up to it, look at it, and if it looks good to them, they're gonna bite it and usually you'll know pretty darn quick within a few seconds. Now I'm gonna cast off this way as well because even though there's not really any structure out this way, there are just so many bass in this lake that some just sit out there at the rock edge. And since it's not especially warm today, it's actually quite chilly when I got up this morning. I decided to push my run off until tomorrow. It's about 60 degrees with cold wind from the storm that came through last night. And again, I apologize if the wind noise is getting to you. Yeah, see, these little guys, they just sit out there all day long and they will steal all your bait when you're trying to fish for crappie and bluegill. I 
Oh, let's get this out of here, guy. There we go. See? Just a little guy. Let's get him back out there. But these little guys, they'll take your bait all day long. It's been tough fishing today, but I think I got three and no one else really hit anything. So not bad for a day at Walnut Creek. See you next time.